Hello, I wanted to make a video showcasing the Corsair H110i GTX all-in-one water cooler from Corsair. I wanted to showcase some of the cooling temperatures that I'm able to achieve with it uh, and how quiet you can get it to run uh, while it's on your system. So if we take a look at some of the modes, there's a quiet mode, which is probably not quite sufficient for cooling your system. Uh, then there's a balanced mode, which gets a little bit loud at times, so I don't like to use it uh, for my standard settings. Then there's performance mode, which is really all loud all the time. Uh, it does perform very well with cooling, but it's, it's overkill, unless you're doing a massive amount of uh, rendering, and even then it is quite overkill. So what I like to do is run a custom curve, and I found that the settings on the screen are actually the uh, best settings that I've been able to find for uh, balancing cooling as well as keeping it quiet. As you can see, the CPU is actually running quite cool at a 26.5 degrees. There is, a, of course, background processes um, rendering this video that are still running. And uh, yeah, so the Corsair Link software basically picks up all of your sensors. Um, although if you're using the ASUS AI suite, um, like I am, then it won't actually provide you with any numbers for those sensors. Uh, I'm, I think that's because the AI suite is actually taking that sensor information and for whatever reason it bypasses the required drivers for the Corsair Link, um, which prevent you from being able to display them. But that's okay because we don't really care about any of those drivers. We'll touch on the AI suite in a moment. So the uh, Corsair Link basically helps you monitor all your uh, water temperatures, your cooler temperature, your GPU temperature, and a couple of the motherboard uh, sensors as well. Now, the H110i GTX doesn't have the same kind of uh, customization as the H110i GT does. They are from different manufacturers, uh, even though Corsair brands them as their own. Their uh, engineering and the, and the production of them come from two different manufacturers. The uh, H110i GTX cooler uh, allows you to set a temperature uh, sensor on the light but with the GT, you can actually set a range of colors based on different temperatures, whereas on the 110i GTX, you can only set a high temperature warning at a specific temperature. And this temperature coincides with the uh, H110i GTX cooler temperature that you see on the screen. So that should never reach anything higher than about 42 or 43 degrees if you have your cooling settings set up correctly. The normal operating mode is basically just a standard color for the light and uh, not a lot of configuration. I was a little bit disappointed in the configuration in the H110i GTX versus the GT, uh, although the GTX does seem to operate quieter with a little bit less vibration. Uh, as well, the uh, 110i GTX doesn't have um, the 90 degree elbows on the cooling into the pump, so I feel that uh, that's a bit of a, a better design for the cooling itself. So what we want to see, obviously the core uh, i7-6700K temp is showing about 25.8. So if we look over at our cores, it looks like it looks like that may just be like a rolling average of the cores themselves. Um, it could be technically, it could be reading off of core zero um, because the polling times may be different, um, but it could just also be an average of all cores. Um, obviously, Temperature sensors, uh, not the most accurate things. They can be plus or minus many, several degrees uh, from one CPU to the next, um, depending on how they're calibrated. So we'll go with the, you know, the stock reading and we'll just say, well, okay, it's running at 26.5 right now. Uh, ambient temperature, if I check. So the, uh, the temperature inside the room right now is 23.3 degrees. And the CPU, even though it's running at, uh, a decent percentage to do the encoding for this video, uh, it's still managing to stay within three to seven degrees of ambient, which is very good for a cooler. Um, I was actually surprised when I'm seeing like 22 degrees, 23 degrees, or I boot up my computer in the morning when it's a little cooler in the room, and I see 17 degrees. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible, to be honest. Um, so yeah, so let's run some benchmarks on this, and let's see what we can actually get this up to. So for benchmarking, I'm going to be using Realbench. Um, I'm kind of a 3D mark, future mark guy, but 
Railbench seems to be the recommended one for what a lot of people are using these days. And as I'm just kind of getting back into things, uh, it's more than sufficient for what I'm doing. So I'm going to do a stress test, um, 15 minutes with all the RAM, and we're going to see what temperature that gets up to. So we'll let that render in the background. So as Realbench approaches its 15 minute mark, we can see that the CPU is running uh, still close to about between 56 to 60 degrees, uh, kind of peaking at 60 degrees on an average. Uh, we can see that the peak temperature is between 61 and 69 degrees. The ambient temperature of the room has dropped a little bit because it is getting cooler outside and the windows open. Um, but you can see that the overall the cooler more than handles 15 minutes uh, on real bench at 100%. And uh, the CPU temperature doesn't seem to heat up too much, uh, even though you can see the cooler temp has gone up. And that's because the radiator is doing its best to keep the coolant that's returning back to the CPU as close to ambient temperature as it can get. I'll turn off the uh, benchmark here. And we can see that it doesn't take long for the CPU to ret return back to cooler levels. So ultimately the uh, H110i GTX uh, cooler is performs very, very well. It's extremely quiet if you set up a custom curve or run it on quiet mode. And uh, it really is the best water cooler, all-in-one water cooler uh, I've seen or worked with so far. Uh, very happy with how it looks, how it sounds, uh, how it functions. And uh, all, all in all, I would say if you're looking for a very good uh, all-in-one water cooler and you've got a case that can hold a two, 280 millimeter radiator, I'd say go ahead and pick up a Corsair H110 GTX. Now the other thing that Corsair Link can do for you is your power supply. The other thing the Corsair Link can do is actually view information on your power supply. And uh, I don't have mine plugged in right now, so I'm going to restart, plug it in, and we'll uh, edit that into the end of the video. For now, I just want to quickly touch on the AI Suite 3. This is uh, where you can control your fans and other aspects. There's this Fan Expert 3, which sets all your fan curves for any of the fans on your case. So I've got a front fan uh, on my case, front bottom, front top, and rear fan. Uh, the fan tuning is actually a really nice feature. It figures out what your peak and lowest RPMs are for your fans and sets up a recommended silent standard turbo and full speed mode uh, based on that. I modified mine a little bit just because I like to kind of keep things quiet. So what I've done is at 40 degrees, I am running as low as I can. So below 40 degrees, it stays at the lowest fan setting while keeping them all turned on. So I just leave mine running at the minimum. And then if it gets up to 60 degrees, uh, I'm kind of running a little bit higher. And then I don't allow it to go over 75 degrees without kicking all my fans into 100%. I don't want to see 75 degrees consistent on my CPU. I'm uh, kind of a stickler for low temperatures. So that's what this controls. And that's one of the reasons why you'll see that these fans, the CPU fans sensors actually are not showing anything in Corsair Link. Uh, I installed Corsair Link first and it was showing all the fan speeds and temperatures. Uh, but as soon as I installed the AI suite and did the fan tuning, uh, I could no longer view these sensors in Corsair Link. Um, I keep Corsair Link open all the time while I'm gaming um, just to kind of keep an eye on cooling temperatures and I'm a little paranoid about water cooling so I want to kind of you know keep an eye on it. Uh, so yeah let's restart and we'll take a look at the settings for what we can see on the power supply. All right so here we are now we're looking at the uh, Corsair Link again I've got my power supply connected to the USB header so now we can actually see our power efficiency and our watts in and watts out. So if we go ahead and we run uh, real bench, we should be able to see that increase quite significantly. We should be able to see kind of what the overall efficiency rating of this power supply is on my computer here. All right, so we'll fire up the stress test and we'll see just how much power this computer wants to draw, and what efficiency rating it's measuring on the power supply. I believe the power supply is rated at 80% plus um, the efficiency is actually better the more power you're using uh, with this, uh, so it does perform ve very nicely. I don't really use this feature, but it is kind of a cool feature to be able to display and view how much efficiency your power supply is outputting, although I'm not sure how the sensors work. I haven't done a lot of research into it, but you know, you can see your 12 volt rails, your 5 volt rails, and 
kind of see if they're maintaining or not maintaining your power settings. Now, I wouldn't adjust any settings here per se. There may be some configuration settings that you can set up uh, if the fan fails, shut down the computer, uh, things like that. And it looks like there actually is the ability to change the fan mode to a fixed percent. So you could have the fan always on if you want, but it does run with the fan off most of the time. That's basically Corsair Link. Um, I've read some people hate it, some people love it. I don't mind it, I like it. Uh, I like that you can change the system image to whatever system that you're using that's Corsair if you're using a Corsair case. Um, I like that it displays my water temperatures, my coolant temperatures, and I also like the fact that you can go in and set up notifications. So for example, if your cooler pump stops working, you could go in ahead and say, you know what, notification I want to shut down the PC uh, we'll do a notification between certain RPMs and uh, yeah if the RPM drops below that minimum or goes above that maximum you can shut down the PC or you could say make our, all the RGB LEDs uh, make sure they're all turned on set all fans to 100% of course those are only the fans that it can control uh, but ultimately you know a good thing to do would be to say hey if the cooler pump fan is not running if it's below let's say 100 rpm let's shut it off because that that's probably going to wreck your cpu and cause it to overheat um, so it's got some of those good features I, I would take advantage of those although um, you know if a sensor glitches out you might end up having your computer shut down on you um, but better safe than sorry right so ultimately i think that it's a good tool um, you know other people probably have their own tools set up uh, I'm going to keep using Corsair Link. I'm happy with it. I really like it. And I'm gonna, just going to keep rocking it until, uh, until we see what happens. The only complaint that I have about the Corsair Link is that the sensors tend to forget uh, which sensors were connected at certain points. So I, may, I have my layout here. I spent my time, built my layout, went in, set my custom curves, and uh, then I save it. Then after a couple of times, if I reboot or if there's a power loss, um, or if I specifically, if I go into the BIOS and make any specific changes, it seems like the Corsair Link software forgets which sensors are which. And these will all read zero. Uh, and then they'll all show up here on the left again. And I've got to, again, I've got to go and set up all my, uh, my layout and I've got to set my custom curve again. So, you know, I've saved my custom curve as a screenshot so that I'll remember what it was. Um, other than that, that's my only complaint. Love the water cooler. Uh, highly recommend it for anyone doing a all-in-one water cooler build. And um, yeah, Corsair Link, it's a good piece of software. I like it. Uh, it's a little bit buggy. Uh, there was a problem with the H110i GT where uh, there was a version of firmware that was released that was causing some really bad noise in the pump and the fans. Um, just bad firmware release. I'm sure they won't do it again. I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, if you did like the video, please like or subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, if you have any special requests or information you'd like to know or something else in depth that you'd like to see a video on, let me know and I will throw it in. I typically do videos on Wednesdays and I try to get a video out on the weekends as well. So I'm trying to aim for two videos a week. And depending on the time that I have available, uh, you know, I may be able to answer your questions. Uh, I might just post a link in your comments or I might do a video for you. Thanks for watching and have a great night. And if you're watching this on the same night that I'm posting it, then happy Back to the Future Day.